Hello there, this is Nick Ritter. I am going to go over Cavalry. So this could be an After Effects killer. They claim to do 2D motion graphics in a procedural way. So think something like Houdini or Cinema 4D. So far, I'm actually really happy with this software. It's got some surprising quality of life type of things. I think workflow wise, it could go really smoothly with getting feedback from clients from creative directors. We're going to make this dealio here. I make a lot of these at my job. I would animate and edit and direct over at Harmon Brothers ad agency. And we do a lot of this, like there's text in a box and it animates in somehow. I'm going to start from scratch. <laughs> this will be my second time doing this ever. Now, first things first, get your tool panel right here. I'm going to select the text one. I click in the middle and then we can change this to whatever. Hello there. Now here's the thing with cavalry. Here's our layers. Some of this might look really familiar to After Effects or like a 2D version of Cinema 4D. So you can hit uh, control period or command period on a Mac to bring up the search. And I'm going to look up a string. This might be weird unless you've done like any sort of like coding, After Effects expressions, whatever. So a string just means text. That's it. I'm going to double click on that. So when you double click on something here, it brings it up in your attribute editor. And it just keeps stacking uh, more and more parameters, attributes that you can edit. You can close out of one. And it doesn't mean that layer is gone. It just means that you're not looking at the parameters. You can always come over, double click to bring it right back up. Let's look at the string option here. Let's have it say something else, like another Star Wars line. I have a bad feeling about this. All the parameters are able to connect with something else. So. You just click and drag, just like the Pick Whip and After Effects and in Cinema 4D. But it's kind of backwards from After Effects. So in After Effects, I would pick like text and I want text. I want this parameter to refer to this one. But as you can see, like it did the opposite of what you might expect it to. So I'm going to undo that. The way it works here is the way it works in anything else that's like node based. So if you've used Blender or again, Houdini. So we want this data here to flow into this text here. And so when I let go, you'll see the text updates. It's a very small application of a very big idea that Cavalry implements that everything can connect to everything else. Yeah, this may not seem like super useful here, but this principle will become useful later. Okay, so let's create a little rectangle shape here. And then we're also going to use what's called a bounding box, or I think it's called that anyway. Let's see. Yep, bounding box. Now the bounding box takes an input shape, which will come from our text layer. The idea is, is that we want the box to automatically resize to fit whatever the text is. So I'm going to take this text shape layer and you can grab the whole layer and drag it over with this little dot. You can also click and drag from your layers down here. I'm going to make this smaller. So I'm going to take this shape here, input shape, drag it in there. So it's, so again, it's the data of the text shape going into the bounding box. Now the bounding box knows exactly what size, width and height that this text layer is. That's the bounding box, not the rectangle yet. So we want to take the size data, click and drag that over to the size of the rectangle shape. So when you release, you'll notice it is now the same size as our text height and width, just like that. It's not the, the same position yet, but you can take the position data of the bounding box, drag it over to your rectangle shape position data. Bada bing, bada boom. Now let's, I'm going to take my text shape, drag it above the rectangle shape. Text shape, uh, rectangle shape, they both have this fill, stroke, and mask tabs. We'll get to the mask tab a little later. Just pick a color. Let's pick something like this. 
And then the text shape, we can make it like a light gray. And I even want to come through and change, let's say I'm on Lado, let's change that to black. So the rectangle is like just right on the edge of our text here. So there's this expand section in the bounding box attribute. And so you can just create a padding like this. Now I like to have my width just a little bit bigger than the height. I just think it ends up looking better. Now when I click and drag the text shape, the rectangle follows behind, but I can't click and drag the rectangle because it's getting its, its uh, position data from the text. I know like rounded corners are kind of out, but I'll show you how to do them anyway, because it's just super easy. Everything is so accessible in this program. It's kind of blowing my mind. Okay, so shape type rectangle. We can uh, set our cor corner radius right here, do a pill, or just like a little bit rounded like that. You can even make it a chamfer instead. You can use simple or complex, meaning that you can add like a rounded corner here like in the top left or the bottom right or two of them at once. And you can even like link up this data to be the same as this data here. And so then you change both the top left and the bottom right at the same time. Super easy. I'll just keep it simple for this example. When we change our string, right, and it updates, it changes the size of the rectangle. All right, cool stuff. So the next thing is to animate the text. What we're going to do actually, as I'm going to duplicate this layer, control command D works to duplicate. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because when you animate text, the bounding box goes haywire, at least at the moment, it just doesn't work properly. So I'm copying the text. So one set of text that will be the reference for our bounding box. I'm actually just going to turn it off and then this text, and I'm going to uh, rename it animate text. So this is what we'll animate. And I'm just going to close out of these to keep things simple. Under animate text, you come in here to deformers and there's this option called sub mesh. So you click on sub mesh and it adds it down here. Now sub mesh, it identifies that yes, there's multiple shapes that make up this layer and allows you to manipulate those things. But you'll notice up here that you can affect the characters. So you look at the sub mesh of each character. You can look at the words, you can look at lines. If you have something longer, you can even create a custom. I'm going to keep it on characters. Now you'll notice that there's this option here, time offset. Now on any of any of these options, you can right click it and add behavior. And it tells you all the behaviors that work on this particular attribute. So what the time offset does is it here, let me, let me just animate this real quick. So we've got this text here and let's animate the position. Oh, let's animate the position. We'll do Y. It also shows up down here automatically. And you can use your plus and minus buttons to move keyframes left and right. So I'm going to move it ahead. Let's see, six frames. And then we're going to move this text up like this. I set composition background alpha to zero. So you'll notice that it's not disappearing. <laughs> it's just that it's white text on a white background. But with the checkerboarding, you can kind of tell that, hey, it's still there. We're just going to move it up and then it animates down. So let's set our out point in the animation to about here. Cool. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go in the middle of the animation and on this, under the sub mesh, here's the time offset that I talked about. Now this goes backwards and forwards by frames. So this is two frames in the future. And this is three frames in the past based on our, our animation here. If there was no animation, it wouldn't be offsetting like that. Now there is a way to stagger the offset. Super easy. So you right click, add behavior, click stagger. You'll already see that something's happening here. As we scrub through our animation, you'll see that we already have some offset. It's not going per character. I'm not exactly sure why that is. So we're going a maximum. When I move this to 10, uh, actually let's move it even higher. As you're looking at the letters and I move the number up and down, the higher the number goes, 
the more it splits the letters up just between like each individual letter. This might have something to do with like the number of characters in the line, number of shapes you're dealing with. I'm not really sure. So that's the first thing that you set. Uh, downside is, and again, like we're still figuring this out, right? Very new program, but on the very first keyframe, we're not at the beginning of our animation. This isn't where I want to start. I want to start with all the text above the text box. And so in the offset, if you take like negative of whatever number you put in as the maximum, I found that that resets it back to what the first keyframe should be. Um, and then every character is following the keyframes from your keyframe uh, timeline down here. So when I play this, I'm going to extend our time. So when I play this, it animates all the characters down. And there's this offset. Now, it, this gets tricky when you're kind of finicking with the numbers and then you, you change it to 15 and then you have to go on and type negative 15. And like in After Effects, you might be used to creating, creating an expression here, pick whipping up to this layer and then multiplying it by negative one or just hit, putting a minus sign in front of it or one minus this property, right? many ways to do it. The Calvary doesn't seem to have that kind of expression system, but what it lacks in expression, it has plenty of nodes for, and then some. So what we do is do control period, type math. So let's add a math node. We're going to pipe our data from maximum here. We're going to pipe that into the first number on our formula, and we're going to multiply it by negative one, and then we're going to pipe the result into the offset. Now when I mess around with this number, this number changes too. I'm going to set that to, yeah, 25. I'll scrub through it real quick. It seems like all the letters are, are being treated differently. Awesome. Okay, let's kind of pretty up the animation. It looks very terrible. Cavalry has one of the best graph editors I've ever used. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. They really put the time and attention to make this work. Let's hit the graph editor button. So there's a time editor and that's what we're looking at. And then you hit the graph editor and bingo. I can click this keyframe and let's add our Bezier handle there. And then let's use this keyframe, add a Bezier handle there. The only thing we're missing is our overshoot animation. So I'm going to add three frames here at the end, add a new keyframe that's at zero. We'll go to our previous keyframe and set this to like negative 20 or something. Let's go back into the graph editor. We'll click on this option. It looks a little wonky. <laughs> so let's go ahead and fix that. You can hold down shift and it locks it in at your 90 degree angles. Let's see. I'm just going to change this curve around here. I don't really care about easing at the beginning and just try to make this as nice as I can. Fantastic. So here's a fun one. <laughs> it's starting at the end. It's a quick fix though. Now on the stagger behavior, you'll see this graph icon. So when you click that, uh, this lets you mess around with the, uh, the graphs. You can change like easing and things. What you do is uh, you can click this button here to flip it. And now you can already see it. There it is. Now it starts from the beginning. Quite nice. Uh, which also another little fun fact <laughs> is if you set one of these to be a negative hundred, you can have like a reverse animation. It's like you can reverse the position, which makes it really nice for iterating for a client or a CD. You can do negative 100 here. And it goes from the back again, which we just got rid of. And so just to throw a couple options out there for you. All right, we're making good progress. The animation's going a little, it still feels a little wonky to me. I'm actually going to move this. There we go. That's looking smoother. Um, to add motion blur is pretty simple. So you go to the shape layer. Uh, there's this motion blur checkbox. You check that, and then like in After Effects, there's a motion blur button that turns on motion blur for your whole composition. So when we hit play, there's the motion blur. And now it's playing back in real time because it cached it. Now one thing to keep in mind, Calvary doesn't cache by default. 
like some of the other software does. So you have to tell it to. Again, really easy. Um, just right over here, there's these arrows. I think it looks like turn on playback caching. You just click that, works like a charm. So when you hit play, it takes a little bit, and then you, whew, it's off to the races. The next thing to do is to create the mask. Now there is this mask tab and you can connect layers to this in a variety of ways. You can take the rectangle shape, right? And you can drag this up, let go. It creates a mask. It automatically also turns off the visibility for that layer. So you can just turn that back on. And then now you've got a mask that works. Another way to do it is you can click and drag the shape uh, blue icon here just onto the animate text layer. And when you let go, it tells you all the things that you can connect that layer to. So in this case, it's just masks, connect to new index, does the same thing. And you can even turn on like subtract, union, intersect, all right here in the mask tab. So I'm gonna turn that layer back on. And there we go. I'm just gonna show you like a couple different options that I'm really excited about. So you can add a text array, which not sure why that Oh, interesting. I'm not sure what the difference is between a text array and a string array. I'm not sure. I'm going to choose text though, because I think string is more like raw data, like this text. Okay. So this text array, you can type in like a variety of different uh, text lines and you can add some more. So like, let's add another uh, four lines. So we've got five lines in here. Where'd you get the coconut? We found them. So here we have uh, several different text layers. Uh, we can turn off auto index. I'm not entirely sure what that's used for actually. So we can turn off auto index and then we can drag uh, the data from this layer into our animate text layer. So let's drag the data there down to text here. I'll replace the connection because it was coming from our string layer. In fact, I can delete that. You'll see the text updated. So when I change this array index, text updates, but you'll notice the text box does not update. <laughs> so this is an important one. Let's open that back up. So we have our text shape open here. Remember this still just has the text that we originally typed, which means we need to bring new data into it. So we can take one behavior and, and connect it to multiple sources. So I'm going to drag the data from text array one into the text field here, and now it resizes because this is the text layer that determines the size of our rectangle. And close out of this one. Let's go to render manager. Okay, dynamic index. What I am going to do is drag the data from the dynamic index here and drag that up to the array index. So what this will do is this, this dynamic index will change. It'll increment up. And so we go to dynamic, make sure that's clicked on five renders. Correct. Okay. So let's render that. So where did you get the coconut? We found them in Masia. <laughs> Again, I don't remember what that's, what that place is called or how to spell it. If that's the case. All right, there we go. We did it. I'm really excited about this software actually. And I've never done that like multi render thing before, but it works so well. It's very intuitive. It, it, it's like w once you learn how to think the way that this program wants you to think, it just like opens up and there's so many different possibilities. I'm not paid or sponsored by them, but I also wouldn't say no. Anyway, thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions or if you have any cool things that you've done in Cavalry, send them my way. If you found this sort of thing useful, helpful, I'm happy to make more. Just let me know down in the comments. Anyway, thank you.